Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions and in today's Two Minute Tuesday, I'm going to show you guys how to easily add a few dynamic properties to your blocks to speed up drawing creation. By the end of the video, we're going to create a block with a rotate parameter like this one here, along with a scale parameter where everything will change dynamically as you move the grips. So let's jump right into the video. All right, so getting started here, as I mentioned, we're gonna be creating a block. We're gonna do that out of this object right here. Let's say this is a water valve symbol, and we're gonna add a scale parameter as well as a rotate parameter after we create it into a block here. Uh, you can see from our example, this is gonna allow us to quickly and easily change the rotation of our block on the fly, a, making it easy to snap it, say, to a line, as well as adjust the size as needed in the project. So to begin, you're gonna to wanna to type in the block command. This is gonna bring up the block definition dialog box, and you're gonna to wanna to give your block a name. This can be anything you need to create, whether it's a valve symbol, uh, piping, uh, test pits, boreholes, a toilet, a sink, uh, you name it, you can create a block from it if it's drawing line work. So we're going to call our example water valve. And we're going to choose our base point first. I'm going to choose the pick point and we want the center of our block typically or wherever you would like to insert it by. So when you insert it, the point you pick right now is going to be where you click when inserting the block. I'm going to choose the center of our block. And then over here, you're going to want to select your objects. You can click this button here and select the block objects that you'd like to include. Hitting enter is going to bring our window back up. You have a few more options. We're not going to dive too much into this. I have an entire video on creating a block. Today, we're going to be looking at adding those custom parameters to make it dynamic. Uh, choosing behavior here, you can choose annotative so it scales with everything. Scale uniformly, allow exploding, and Make sure you choose the correct unit for what you're, you've drawn your object to. You'll want it drawn to scale. Hitting OK is going to convert our objects to a block for us since we've selected this here. So we're going to hit OK. Now we've got a block, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, but if not, you've now made your first block in AutoCAD. Selecting it and right-clicking is going to give you the block editor option and depending on the version of AutoCAD that's probably going to be in your right click menu here. Choosing it is going to bring up our editor. This is focused on just the block object line work and it's going to allow us to add parameters. We're not going to dive into everything in here today since this is just a two minute Tuesday but I am going to show you how to easily add that scale and rotate parameter. First you're going to need to add the parameter here. So for rotate, you can add a rotation parameter here. And it's going to ask you for a base point. Typically, you'll want that same base point you chose before. This is the point about which all of the objects you select are going to rotate. I'm going to choose the center here. And it's going to ask for the radius. And this is simply asking where to put that little toggle or grip uh, to rotate your object. And it's also going to allow you to align it with something in particular. I'm going to align it with this center plane of my valve so that I can easily rotate my valve along, say, a waterline uh, object. So I'm going to place my rotation marker right here. And it's going to ask you for the default rotation. Hitting enter is just going to leave it at zero. And then it's going to ask you how many grips you would like. And that would be the little button that you can click and drag to rotate. I'm going to leave it as default one. And you can see we've got our angle or rotation parameter here. We're going to also add a linear parameter. And this is going to allow you to change the length of this parameter and in turn we're going to set it to the scale function so it's going to scale our object up and down based on how long or far away you drag that point you could also use a variety of other options here including polar or x and y if you'd like to get a little bit more in, de in depth or detailed with your dynamic block we're going to choose the, the linear option for our example 
and it's going to ask you for a start point. Again, you're either going to want to choose the center or one of the ends of your block so that you can scale it based on a specific length or two points. In our case, you'll see we're going to use the center point here, and I'm going to use the outer edge of our block. Dragging this up is simply going to place the distance label and marker uh, depending on where we click. It's going to ask us once again how many grips you would like. In general, for a scale uh, parameter, I'm only going to want one, so I'm going to change that to one. And that's simply going to give us a little toggle here that we can now drag in and out, which is going to give us that scale or width changing dynamically. Now that we've added our two uh, parameters here, we need to assign a function to them. So first we're going to do the scale function. Uh, clicking it is going to allow us to choose a parameter. So the parameters will tell the scale or rotate option what to do. You can see here we have a bunch of options including flip, array, rotate, scale, stretch, polar stretch, and move. You can use these in conjunction with any of these parameters uh, for your blocks. So you can get as complicated or as simple as you'd like. Maybe just adding a rotate for something you need to rotate often or just a scale or a move depending on how your block is set up. Again, for our example, we're going to do the scale first here. It's going to ask me to select the parameter that's going to control the scale function. We're going to choose distance, parameter, and now it's going to ask me to select my objects. I'm going to select all of my objects here because I want everything to scale along with it. If you'd only like a few of the objects to scale and the rest to stay in place, say you only wanted to scale these outer uh, triangles, you could just select those and they would scale based on the base point. In most cases, you're going to scale your entire block. So in ours, we're going to select everything here and hit enter, including the parameter since we want its base point to move along with our parameter. Hitting enter has now added that. You can now see it here next to the distance parameter, our scale action. Right clicking is going to allow you to modify it or delete it. You can also add new uh, objects or create a new selection set or object set if you've added more to your block and you need to include that line work or parameters in your function. Uh, in our case, we've included everything. We're going to move on to our rotation. So now we can go back up here, choose rotate, and similar again, we want to choose our parameter, which would be the angle that's going to control the rotation function. And now it's going to ask us to select our objects. Again, I'm going to choose everything here because I want everything to rotate along with this parameter. And this is going to make sure that our distance or scale parameter rotates along with us so that it stays in line with the rest of the objects. And you'll see how that works when we're finished here. Selecting them all and hitting enter is going to finish that. And now we will have, when we close and save our block, a dynamic block that has both scale and rotation parameters built into them that we can use on the fly to create drawings and add our blocks faster and more efficiently. Hitting close in the top right here and then saving our changes is going to update our block in our drawing. Selecting it, you can see here that we can now scale in and out depending on this uh, this grip here. So if we move it to the left, it's scaling up our block. Moving it down to the right is scaling it down. And grabbing this grip on the right is allowing us to rotate it. So for example, if we have, say, a water line running like this, and we want to add a valve in the middle here, you can simply move your block, say snap to the center point there, and now we can rotate it to match in parallel our line. And if you've got a specific width or size, you can adjust on the fly, making a copy or inserting a new water valve. And letting me choose a location is going to let you quickly add more to our drawing and then on the fly, adjust as needed. So there you go. That's how to add either the scale or rotation parameters to your dynamic blocks. 
And again, you can explore that block editor a little bit more, get a little fancier. And if you guys would like, I can do another video on some more of those options. Let me know in the comments what you liked about this video, what maybe you'd like to do with a dynamic block, and we can explore that in a future video. Don't forget to hit subscribe down below and that like button. And if you like this tip and would like to learn more AutoCAD fundamentals and workflows, check out my new course, which is available now, discounted to subscribers and viewers using the link up above or down in the description below. Again, that's AutoCAD fundamentals and workflows in a hurry. Uh, it's my recent course that is jam packed full of tutorials and training that are going to speed up your AutoCAD process. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to check out my last video right here. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe up here to make sure you're up to date and you see all my new videos. Thanks again. Cheers.